Hey guys, I'm excited to announce that we set up a drone show for this Friday night at the Freedom Factory. So if you're coming to the Freedom 500, you are in for a treat. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure that I have made a large mistake in my promotional activities. I've been preaching to you guys that you gotta watch the Freedom 500 pay-per-view, which is this Friday. And I have barely promoted the fact that you can actually come to the Freedom Factory in person. This is a huge fault on my behalf. We literally have so many tickets still for sale for this weekend. And I need any of you who are available this weekend to come to the track because listen, I got behind in my promoting. So for the Freedom 500 night, we have 2,000 tickets for sale still on thefoat.com. If you've wanted your opportunity to come to the Freedom Factory Friday night, I need you guys to come. Go look at the tickets for sale. You can even get our two-day ticket and come to Cletus and Cars, which is Saturday, which also has still a ton of tickets for sale. So come see Killa B, Toast, and all of our burnout cars in action. We're even gonna have Leroy, McFlurry. Shoot, we might even have the Carbon Cub out on display. You guys can come check out all of our cars in the Freedom Factory. I feel terrible that I slacked on this because normally this event, we sell a ticket it's like that but we've got a ton of tickets for this weekend so please visit thefoat.com i would recommend getting a ticket online to come to this weekend's event or you can just walk up on friday or saturday and we should still have some tickets available but we got a lot of updates to show you let's get to the crown vic hell yeah brother you're on the please me for on youtube channel look at this mess well done paint his pants <laughs> so guys obviously we've got an oil leak on toast we gotta get that fixed for the weekend. It actually still does have oil in it. Just slowly coming out of somewhere, which you know, sweating horsepower is okay. That's a little bit too much horsepower. We've sweat gearing up for the weekend. Ooh. We've got all the cars in here right now because the toter home's out getting repaired from the hurricane damage. But we gotta get some of these burnout cars going. And you already know your boy puts the teeth by the fire right now. I guess it's ready. It's always ready. Zach, are you driving Rodney this weekend? Rod knock Rodney? It might have a rod knock when I'm done with it. <laughs> We're full of now. It might have a rod knock, yeah. I well, think... let's start it up and cold rev it a few times and yeah, make sure everything's cool good. chip on the startup. We don't want that off of there. I don't you throwing know. the old die hard back in it? Yeah, she got melted last time, but you know. So what coolant temp do you usually want me to lift at in this? Oh, uh, you don't have to worry about it. I'll uh, just keep going. Yeah, just you keep just keep going. going. Just You're not going to exceed hedge. Rodney's limitations. He doesn't really have those. And a wall tap is acceptable. More than wall taps are actually recommended. It's got to be weird. I'm not used to that. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to treat this thing right. If you drive it like a wimp, you're done. You're done. ready, bud? We got yeah. no, uh, no We pipes, don't need that. But... It's good to always leave your you know, truck sitting out in the rain for a little bit. Show it who's boss. Dude, we need the nitrous hooked up. Oh, you got yeah. plenty of power. Oh! <laughs> like you never Sucker's ready to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. The cold rev is real. <laughs> the cold rev is real, man. It's got plenty of oil pressure. Look at that. Unbelievable. Oh yeah, uh, you don't need that. Yeah, you can probably fix that. Making a lot of boost. Yeah, it's probably making a little more boost than it should. Hopefully Zach doesn't blow it up, dude. You're gonna be pissed. Sad you won't be here, Jordan. So it's 
Woo! It's kind of like exactly. when you can't take hey. your girlfriend out and I have to take her out for you. Yeah, you're taking out George's <laughs> girlfriend this dude, weekend. If I find out you cold rib this thing and break it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that so was mad. a that was a real cold rev. That was no like little cold rev. That was a cold rev and a half. I'm you gotta, impressed. If you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're definitely serpentine belt and age to perfection. Definitely doing it right there. <laughs> yeah, it's all cracked. The computer cover has been uh, melted, seared Yo, to perfection. We don't need that where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go fire up neighbor and see his oil pressure. Oh, some things are better. No, me. no, we gotta show the people because <laughs> if it blows out this weekend, I want them to know. I mean, you don't gotta do nothing to rob me. No, that's. That thing sounded absolutely <laughs> a lot better than when you parked it. I That's, say. yeah, strange. When you parked it, I was like, man, that thing's done. Maybe the rod knock fairy came and fixed it. <laughs> Someone came. Some some fan jumped the fence and repaired it. While <laughs> Built the motor. All right, neighbor. Oh. Got a little spark there. Oh, yeah, this one's... doing a huge burnout in the Tahoe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this thing's hiding, waiting for the announcement of the winner, which we do not have a confirmed winner yet. Well, I mean, that sounds good enough to go into a burnout pit. Will it drive out of the burnout pit? I don't know. One thing's for sure, you're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. All right, Toast, we'll be back to fire you up, but we gotta fix your oil leak first. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world's first Crown Vic roll cage assembly line. We have a legitimate assembly line going on inside the shop right now you can see this car has just been pulled in take a gander in the back here we got an nos nitrous system going in we got the nitrous bottle mounts we got the inertia switch getting cut and you know bypassed because if you bump a crown vic from the back it'll just hit the inertia switch cut the fuel pump off see the nitrous systems going in this car and also our light that indicates when a driver is using nitrous. We have 30 brand new Crown Vicks that we are equipping for the entire year. So we have the Freedom 500, then we have the Indy 800, then we have the Bristol 1000, and then we have the 2.4 hours LA mullets. We are planning for the first time ever to use these Crown Vicks for the entire season. Normally we buy two or three sets of Crown Vicks throughout the year, but we wanted to step up our safety this year, which was a lot more money, which kind of meant, hey, instead of just scrapping a car when the engine blows, why don't we just keep the chassis and we'll swap in an engine. So we're gonna have a totally different take on it this year, but check this thing out, man. Take a look at this. Ty just went ahead and tacked in this cage. It is, you know, for the most part, just tacked in and ready to go. We got with cagekits.org out in California and we bought 50 roll cages. So obviously a lot of cars are gonna get totaled this year and some will have to be recaged, but we bought a bunch of roll cages. So just getting put in, I mean, we're talking way beefier roll cages. Last year we had the four point. Let's take a look in here. We've got dash bar. We've got a forehead bar. We've got pillar bars. This is a totally different ball game. We went from having just that four point cage to going all out. If there's a driver's door impact now, you know, we don't have to worry this thing. That's insane. That's a lot of roll cage. You know, it's an investment in our future of doing this. We've had some bad crashes last year, to be honest. We're just gonna spend the money and make it right. I want all the drivers to be safe so that we can keep doing this. So this is the cagekids.org pallet right here. One of multiple pallets. The way these cages come now, they're pre-bent, pre-notched. And then if you look down on here, they're even marked for where the cage has to go together. So our boy Ty is over here. Ty, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing hot and sweaty. <laughs> the guy loves welding, you know. So he just can't fun. get enough of it, especially on Crown Vic. Yeah, that's his probably, top. Probably my pinnacle of weld is on Crown Vic. <laughs> probably the nicest I've ever done. See, Ty's got another cage all tacked together. 
And Ty, what would you say are the biggest improvements on these cages? You know, obviously the door bars. I mean, safety in general is the biggest thing that we were going for. Yeah. But um, I would have to say door bars is like huge. You know, yeah. you we could get hit by a semi bar. truck and you'd be all right in this thing now. Yeah. It's got yeah. a lot more door bars. A lot more strength overall for the car. And then it's got the down bars in the back. I mean, this is the real deal. What's this top bar called by the window? Uh, windshield bar. Windshield bar. So to give Ty a little bit of relief, we have Bayside Ben from Bayside Fabrication. He's just welding them out. So Ty takes the cage out of these amazing pallets, by the way. The cage gets guys custom built these pallets just for us. Ty takes them out, packs them in the car, and then Ben just MIG welds them out because there's a lot of welds. You know, it used to be the one hoop and then the two <laughs> door bars. Yeah. We're talking a total of like 10 welds. Now, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's more than ten in just the door bar. So we had to bring in some backup from our boy Ben, and he has been welding away over there, which he's a good welder. That's the same guy that did the Cajun Donnie. So really happy that he's here. You know, a real big thing too is with how many more door bar tubes and everything are in this than the old cages. We're still only like a couple hour difference per day on hitting like five a day. Yeah, and so. that's. That's solely because of the cage hits, guys. Yeah. And and honestly, they didn't sponsor us or anything, but without them, we would be screwed. Because yeah, you couldn't, it would take six months to do all these cars. Yeah. We're gonna do it in a couple days. Literally every piece of the cage is already done and notched. You look, they come out of the box notched, ready to go. It could not be more simple. Oh, look at this. It even has Lego instructions. <laughs> so, you know, now that we're all organized, I can grab this stuff and slap it in the car. How long does it take you to pack up a cage? This one was about an hour and a half start to finish. And then Ben probably takes another hour and a half to weld it out. Yep. So to put a full cage like this in a car in three hours, insane, unbelievable. But it's worth the extra money because we're saving so much time. Yeah. So, all right. Next step in the assembly line, the this car already has a set of Nitto NT555 G2s on it. You know our boys at Nitto hooking it up. We have brand new tires on all the cars to start off the season right for the Freedom 500. Typically the cars wear out the right front and maybe the right rear at the Freedom Factory. So we'll put freshies on it. We probably won't change the inside tires until after the Indy 800. These Nittos are the only tire I think that could go 100 laps at the Freedom Factory. They are insane. We got Zach right there putting some camber adjustments in the car. He's towing them to uh, make them just a little bit quicker around the Freedom Factory. It also helps a lot with tire wear. So they're faster and they go through less tires. So doing alignments on them, not something we've done in the past up until the end of last year. But now we have to align each car, which is a several hour process. And then at some point it'll be checked over, fluids, everything like that. Most of the cars have already been mechanically gone through by our new Crown Vic guy. He's checking everything from the U-joints to the brakes, to the fluids, transmission, driving them around the track, making sure they're hundred percent before we start investing in them with the roll cage, nitro system, and a lot of man hours. We got a car that's tacked up, ready to go. Comes to our next station. Yeah, already has tires on it. Jack Stan's been doing a lot of tires. This is a nice car right here, dude. I know, dude. This one's super cool. Look at the wheels on this <laughs> unit. Oh, frick, dude. It's brand new. You might need to claim this unit. Yeah. Ben, how you feeling in there, dude? Cozy? <laughs> you look great. This guy's a little blanket down. Yet? Not yet. It's getting there. It's only car three, so. <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, we have a lot to go, but between Ty and Ben, we're gonna get there. And thankfully, cage kids, <laughs> this would not be possible without those dudes. I mean, look at how many freaking bars are in this car now. And to do that in three hours, it's insane. That being said, guys, we're going all out for you this year. You Cleaver Crew members, you guys are the ones that made this possible because we had to front a lot of money to buy a complete fresh set of cars and then all these cages, all these systems, you guys honestly helped us put up the money to do that. So I'm really excited for the season. Hopefully these cars last, man. I hope they make it to the end of the year. Oh, and also Summit Racing helped out with that too, because they sponsored the Freedom 500. That also gave us the cash to fully make this happen. So if you guys want, go to summitracing.com. If you make an order over 75 bucks and use code please at checkout, you'll get a free pay-per-view for the Freedom 500. So take advantage of that. Overall though, the Crown Vicks are coming together. We will be ready for the Freedom 500, but we'll only be ready in the nick of time. Probably the day of we'll finish the last cage. So you know how it goes. All right, that's enough Crown Vic talk. Let's see what's next. Yeah, you gonna need some of that train of fluid. Yeah, I only got a 
Did you prime this thing at all? Fuel system wise? No, nothing. It's got no fuel in it. Oh. I was just wanting to get fluids in it, run it on the starter to get it to uh, get a little pressure. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, so much in there. Yeah, okay. That's a much safer option. All right, well, now we are thinking we may have found a, a major issue here. Go ahead and hit it, Zach. Watch this thing, see if that lights up. No spark later coming at her. Can't get those at your local Walmart. That mm -hmm. may or may not be the reason this thing blew up. Yeah, so that thing takes the crank sensor and once it reads that it's picking up off the magnets, yeah. it sends it back to this box and fires a coil that yeah, fires We just had this. this off and everything's spinning like normal. Everything's good in there. So if you guys remember, when Killa B blew up originally, we came right here, I mean, right after the burnout, yeah. there was broken wires on this box. Still had power, but there was a broken wire and the car just blew up out of nowhere. We didn't really know why. Now when we're trying to fire back up, for some reason we have no spark at all. So we're like, did the, did the ignition box go bad and you know, start firing off in the wrong position and maybe that's what blew it up. I don't really know. Either way, we've tracked everything back to this box and we're just gonna overnight one and hope that fixes it. Hopefully our theory is right. You guys can let us know if you have a better theory in the comments, but we won't know until we get a new box.